In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a complete tutorial to running the Cover 3 defense in Madden uh, football. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel focuses in on helping people become the best Madden player they can become. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you right now to click subscribe down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. In this video, we are doing uh, some Madden 22 training camp. If you're not excited for Madden 22 yet, I hope that this video will get you excited for it because it's going to be an awesome year. There's a lot of change coming to the game, a lot of new uh, ways to think about it, but at the same time, it's still football, and so I'm excited to break down this Cover 3 defense for you. Now, Cover 3 is really, honestly, it's probably the most popular defense that you'll see in Madden. Um, it, there's a lot of different strategies at which you can run this coverage, um, and today what we're going to be talking about is we're just going to be talking about base cover three. And what I mean by base cover three is I mean just good old traditional cover three sky. Um, and we're going to go over the zones that you have on the field. And we're also going to go over um, kind of some adjustments that you can make to make this even a better coverage. So cover three, essentially what it is, um, is it is a three deep four underneath coverage, meaning three defenders in the deep and four defenders underneath. Obviously rushing four. Um, in, in Madden 21, the number one defense that was called was cover three. In Madden uh, 19, the number one defense that was called was cover three. In Madden 18, number one defense that was called was cover three. This is the most popular defense year in and year out. And the reason why is because it is kind of good against a little bit of everything. Now, I'm excited to break down some of the changes to cover three in Madden 22, you're gonna notice, and some of the things that you need to be prepared for. So, first things first about cover three, this is specific to whenever you don't use zone drops, okay? We're not using zone drops yet. Uh, we're gonna, we, we actually cover that in our defensive encyclopedia, which I'm gonna hit on down in the description. If you've not picked that up yet, it's a great resource. Um, basically what it is, like I said, I put a link to the guide in the description. But it's literally an encyclopedia of what every zone does, whether it's zone dropped or not. So it covers both. It's If it's zone dropped at 10, it covers it. If it's zone dropped at 30, it covers it. If it's zone dropped at 5, it covers it. And in some of the most popular zone drops, it shows you what routes it takes away and what routes it leaves open. So I want to break this down. And the first thing that I want to do with this is I want to show what this looks like in terms of um, auto flip. So it is a traditional rule within the cover three, if you have auto flip on, if they are in trips, it is very likely that the cover three, the deep third safety, is going to be shaded to the trip side. Now, for example, if I were to audible across over here to the trips weak, you're gonna see here that if they're in trips, take a look at the defense, this is kind of what I'm getting at, it auto flips over. Now, if the offense flips, then you flip with them. As you can see right here, we auto flip to that side, and now that deep third is shaded across. The reason why is because the biggest thing that you have to understand about cover three, and the biggest thing that the offense is gonna try to do, is they're gonna try to manipulate your deep coverage. So understanding how this coverage works in the deep is really important. And really what I like to recommend to people, this is something that we saw in Madden 22, is you have to understand in every defense that you run, who is the person that I should be usering? Who is the person that I should be usering? My, uh, my thought on this is the person that you should be usering is the person that is opposite of this deep third. So this guy right here, Whitehead, is going to be my user. And what you've seen before probably is you've seen a defense that looks basically like this cover three maybe right this is the best way to play cover three in my opinion it's going to be good in madden 22 and it's going to be good in madden 23 and it's it's been good not just in madden 21 this coverage has been good every year why because of the routes that people like to use a lot of people what they like to do is they like to do basically this flood this is the number one concept that will be ran in Madden 22, it was the number one concept that was ran in Madden 21. It's the number one concept that was ran in Madden 20. And that might be a post and drag, but it's basically the same thing, okay? So 
And that's why Mabel coverage is so popular. Now, I wanna just kind of break down um, for a second here what these hook curls do. Uh, what a hook curl does really quickly, so that you can understand this, if you take a look at this zone, um, you're gonna see that it's gonna basically take anything from the hash mark to the hash mark on this, on the wide side. So it's gonna play hash mark to hash mark. And on the left side, it's going to play basically split in between these numbers. Anything that comes into this little area is what it's gonna defend. Now, uh, a curl flat. So a curl flat zone plays curl to flat. What that means is it's going to drift back here, and if there's no route over in here, then it will come down and play down in this area. Okay, so I'll show you what this looks like. So we're just gonna run kind of a standard curl flat, and then we'll run like a post, like a levels concept basically, something like this. Okay, it's not the ball, and watch what happens. You see the curl flat, it's, or the curl flat zone goes to the curl, um, and then as you can see here that the, the underneath flat is open. So let's dive into the coverage. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see these curl flat zones, um, one of the things that I absolutely love about this, this is kind of a rule of thumb that Cover 3 puts into its coverage, is something that zone drops actually messes with. So when you call this Cover 3, you're gonna see that it's gonna, it's gonna jam this vertical. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make it hard for him to run up the seam. There's no window for them to throw a seam route to that guy. So as you can see here, you can't throw that. And then if you take a look here, there's no curl route. So watch what this curl flat defender does. He'll come down eventually to this. See, see how he breaks down on the flat because there's no other route in this area? He'll break down. Now over here, we're actually gonna get a little bit of a difference. So because this guy doesn't go vertical, 14 doesn't go vertical, then the curl flat defender kind of spreads out with him. But look at this right here. Notice real quick, this is really important, understanding the, the flat route, even though the flat route is not necessarily a big play route, watch what it does. You see how it's pulling this, this um, curl flat defender outside? So I can actually still throw this curl route if I wanted to, because the flat route has now pulled him outside of the, outside of the grid, okay? So that is one of the biggest things that most people don't understand about curl flat zones. They think that a curl flat zone will stop a curl route. It won't if there's a flat because it's curled to flat. And what that means is a flat can pull it outside of the grid in which it can defend a curl route. Now, I wanna spend a, a brief moment here on um, this out route to the circle receiver. So if I were to run an out route, and let's just say I run an out and a flat, I want you to watch what happens in cover three. If you take a look at this corner on the right side, you're gonna notice that he's gonna do something very specific. He's actually going to sit on the out route. And I'm gonna talk about why in just a second. So watch how this works. You'll see he plays the out route, okay? Now, I wanna show you one other little pro tip, and this is a concept that Fancy from TNC Crew uh, was running back in, I think, Madden 20, maybe even Madden 13, uh, but this is one of his favorite plays. So what he would do is he would take X and put him on a curl, and then he would have his out route to Brown. If X got pressed, he would throw the circle receiver. Take a look at what happens when I do this in this game. You'll see that the circle receiver is open, but the corner does come down on that, and if that corner is a little bit better of a zone coverage, he'll play that a lot better. Now I wanna show you the same concept, but I wanna do it to the short side of the field because I want you to see the difference. So same concept, and I want you to watch, watch Evans. Snap the ball, watch how much more open Evans is gonna be, okay? So that's a big difference. And I'm gonna just show this real quick one more time. And I just want you to watch how consistent this is. I'm pressing out of this coverage. And this is gonna help set up my next point about cover three. So I'm just gonna take triangle, put him on um, a curl. And then I'm gonna put Evans on a smart routed out route. Watch what happens, snap the ball. And you see I can throw the out route. You see how much, see how the corner bails. And I wanna break this down in instant replay so I want you to understand what I'm, what I'm getting at here. This is a really big point for cover three, it really is. Watch what happens here. This cornerback um, is going to bail. So you see here, out, he's running, and then on the cut, watch. Watch what the corner does. He does not come down, look where he's at. He's five yards off, now he comes down, it's way too late to do that, okay? Now I just wanna show you this, set. I, again, I just wanna drive this point home because it's really gonna set up what I'm about to talk about with the deep blue zones uh, from cover three. This was out of our press alignment. 
So we we're uh, anticipating this is going to be really good next year. Is out rock smart running out. So watch circle. So now circle runs his out, and look at what happens. It gets intercepted. Completely different. Completely different. We dove deep into this point in our route concept or our, our defensive encyclopedia, but just watch what happens. It's major, major difference. It's really important to understand this because most people um, would think, well, I should run an out route to the wide side of the field because there's more room for it to get open, and that's a major, major uh, fallacy. Watch what happens out of cover three. He runs his out, and now watch. On the cut, look at where that corner is. He sits on the out route. Why? This is why. Look at this. Because of this guy right here. Because of his placement, and look at the coverage. Because of his placement, this is, you have to understand, this is a grid. Madden in the programming of the game has made this a grid system. And so what that means is these cover three zones have very specific grid points at which they're defending. So when the when the deep third is coming from this side of the field, what happens is the grid tells 24 that if this guy runs vertical, which he does, I don't have to worry about him because I've got my backside safety. On this side, it's not the case. The game already knows that there's no deep blue zone over here. There is no, there's no zone, okay? So now watch what happens. Snap the ball and watch. He's always going to bail, whether it's a curl or anything. See how, see how much more depth he gets than this guy? Way different, okay? And so it's, and it's all because of where this guy is. Now I want to show you a little pro tip out of this. And this is um, a really, really, I think, powerful point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the play. So now we got our safety on the short side. Now I want you to watch what happens. Watch the out route on the left. He does a better job. He doesn't exactly jump it, but he does a better job. And let me show it to you one more time just so we can get consistency. There you see it. Okay. So in essence, what we found is not only is it because of the safety, but it's also because of where the ball is out on the field, okay? Um, because if I were to, um, I want you to also watch now, we're going to flip it, and I want you to watch the circle receiver. And we'll just curl in. Watch circle. Sits on it, okay? So it's, it's not just a, where the safety is, it's also a wide side of the field thing. So what we can do now is we can now... Um, understand okay based off of this cover three grid now we can do some stuff so as far as cover three beaters so what we can do is we could do something like a streak in and out and watch what happens um, this streak of the seam and this is where I'm really gonna drive home my point about the grid system because cover three the biggest thing you have to understand is the vertical seams are the problem the vertical seams is where everything can break down for cover three um, so even in, and I'm just going to flip this because I want you to see what happens and I don't want any pressure. I just want you to see the route. So all I'm going to do is streak X and put circle and out route. I'm going to block my running back. Watch what happens. Curl flat lets him go. And that deep safety will basically glitch out or that deep corner will basically glitch out. It's a one play score. Okay. Why did that happen? Really important point. Why did that happen? Really important point. Let's talk about it. The reason why it happened, and this is a really big point for understanding how you want to work your cover three. So if you watch this, what you're going to see is this safety on the right is going to basically, again, think about it as a grid. So if he's in a deep third, his grid is from this, um, whatever this is called, the, the boundary, the out of bounds line, right, to this number. That's his grid. That's his grid. So if there's a receiver, and if you look at this, this guy's just inside the numbers. If he runs vertical inside the numbers, this corner is not going to play him if there's something that he has to worry about. So watch what happens. He goes to the vertical, but watch. The streak's down in his grid, so look, he is freezing. He's glitching out, and it's allowing me to throw this ball up the seam. Why does that matter? Because the, the back side of this... It is also true. So if you if you take a look at my uh, safety here, the grid, 
Now watch. Now I have a safety over here. I'm going to run the same exact concept. Watch the X receiver. The same thing is going to happen. It's just the safety is now in that grid. The same exact thing happened to the corner on the wide side of the field. This is huge for when we talk about protecting your cover three and how to do it. Okay, so let's jump into this replay real quick. And this is a huge point, okay? I really want you to pay attention here. So watch this right here. Watch the safety or the corner. He sits, and then the grid breaks down, so he's out. Okay, so he's kind of in no man's land. And now look, I can throw this ball. Now, if that safety is not good, I can, especially if there, and there are some routes um, in this game from the Baltimore Ravens playbook where this guy would be on like a wiggly fade to the outside. Um, this is also why clear out SE out is so good. This is also why uh, Jess dig is so good. This is a cover three bomb. Uh, as you can see, he can kind of fade to the outside and there's a big window over here. If I can get the receiver to get over here, that's where the window is. Okay. Now on the short side, this same route concept will not, will not work. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, we're just going to press and it, 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 you would think it, it would work. You would think it would work. But uh, it's primarily, oops, let me, uh, let me press here, pass commit. So now I just want you to watch the left side. And what you're going to see is the out route should get open, but the triangle route should get covered by that safety. So you'll see right here, see that? It throws right into it. So the throw, even though, um, even though you have a seam by the picture, it's not open. And the reason why it's not open is because of the grid. Again, the grid, the grid. I cannot stress home, drive home enough the point that the grid system is a huge deal. See here, I can throw it right at the seam, and it's not going to matter. Okay? So how could you manipulate this as a, as a quarterback? Um, this is another popular tactic that people will do is do two streaks and we'll just do comebacks on the outside. Just a simple, to understand the scene, the idea of the scenes on this. And then the idea of the grid. Watch what happens here. This is true four verts. You see, I can throw this ball right in there and have an opportunity. Now that's only an inside pass lead, which is what I remember my first point was, user, if that's, if, if, if you're sitting here, if you're sitting here, right? And you see that triangle goes vertical, even if X, watch this right here. I'm going to go to triangle until I have to come off of him. So I go to him, go to him, go to him, come off. And there's no window to throw it. Okay. That's the, that's the user uh, realm of a cover three. So that's kind of how you can protect your cover three. Um, one other little pro tip. Uh, this is something super, super effective against cover three bombs to the wide side of the field. And what it is, is again, we're going to capitalize on the grid mentality. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this guy right here and we're going to put him in an inside quarter. And remember where our user is going to work. Our user is lurking into this seam. So if we see a post, it's ours. We see a streak of the seam, it's ours. But what you're going to see now is if they run that cover three bomb that we just showed you, you'll see that, watch this inside quarter, just take him, and he takes it away. That's another little easy thing that you can do out of cover three, again, to protect against this idea of the grid system. The grid system being the major problem with cover within cover three, in my opinion. Okay? So that's one way. Another thing that I want to go over real quick is this idea of a... Um, a post to the slot being a problem against cover three. So I'm just going to smart route Miller, um, put triangle on a corner. I just want you to watch this play. And you'll see here that X, again, and it's really important to stress, there's not a whole lot of cover three bombs to the short side of the field. You can feel pretty confident in your short side outside third as far as getting back on the defense. The wide side outside third is really the problem. That's the one that messes, messes up. So another little trick um, of the trade that you can do is you could take 
the outside guy and put him in an outside quarter, outside quarter zone. So now, let me just show you. Snap the ball, watch the circle receiver or the X receiver, and look, you see the outside quarter still matches uh, on the outside guy as long as he goes vertical. So that's where, you know, one of the other adjustments that you can do is you can use a deep half adjustment. So a deep half adjustment um, is a good one to go to, especially if you want that guy to play the deep half grid and the deep half grid being the, um, the hash mark or the middle of the field to the number. So watch this, I'm gonna try to throw that bomb again. And now what you'll see is if I try to throw that, you see he recovers on the ball. So one simple tactic is to put a deep half on the wide side of the field. The problem with that is, and this is where it really comes down to, I think, a really important point against cover three and understanding how it works. And I'm just going to spy the, the rush off here just so you can understand. So let's say that they do that. They put the deep half to circle. Now what I want to show you is a corner route, a streak, that flood concept we talked about. What you'll see is this curl flat zone won't get back and that deep half won't really play it that well. It did play it there, but it doesn't typically play the corner that well, especially if that corner route is um, kind of a special corner route that we can get out of like Z spot from Bunch. Um, and I'll show it to you maybe with Chris Godwin just so it looks a little bit different. Uh, but you could do something like this where you do like a smoke screen or not a smoke screen, but a hitch, a corner, something like this, right? Um, and I just want you to watch this. Now I got a little bit more room. I can't get pressed. And I got a lot of room on the sideline to be able to throw that corner out. Therein lies the issue. If that's a cover three, that doesn't get burned. So you see what I'm kind of getting at. That is why I believe the best adjustment you can do from a cover three perspective is simply put this guy in that inside corner. That's going to take away all the bombs to that side. And then what you can do is now you can play this guy into essentially a deep third. Okay, that to me is the best way to do this. Um, your short side of the field is going to be a little bit of an issue with out routes, but as long as you, you know, maybe put this guy in like a, uh, a cloud flat or something, you're going to be good. Okay, now I want to spend a few minutes on, um, I want to spend a few minutes on this post route. This is a concept that is really good from compression, it's really good from bunch, it's really good from spread. It's the same concept no matter what formation you're really in. Uh, but it's this right here. And basically what it is, um, is what we're going to do is we're going to put this this corner around the triangle. And then we're just going to snap the ball. And what you should see is X will basically be a late bomb deep. So if you watch it, and, and I might need to move. I actually need to move or flip the play. My bad. I need to flip the coverage so you can kind of properly see everything. So let me just flip the coverage here. And what I'll actually do is just put Evans on a comeback, smart route it, and then put like a hitch there. And just watch Miller. So what you'll see is he'll come underneath. And it actually played it pretty well there. But that's kind of an issue. Um, it's more of an issue from like good bunch. Um, I'll show it to you from another formation here. I'll show it to you from compression. Because you'll see it out of gun tight a lot. And I'll just do buck seams. So you see here it is. And we'll just flip the coverage. Again, that idea of wide side of the field. So what you should see is triangle. And I'm going to put brown on a corner. And then I'm just going to streak X. This is kind of the concept right here. And then maybe what they'll do is they'll send something like that, like a drag or something. Just watch what, what happens here. The, the corner should get matched. He doesn't right there so we can throw it. This again, come, again, it comes back to this idea of a grid system. Let me show you one other way they can do this. Um, and that's if they run this to the short side. And I don't think this works as much as it, it did work a lot more in the beginning of the year. It's kind of a, an old school traditional concept of a cover three beater. It's not something that, um, I think this was something that they may have patched um, but again, what you're going to see is, you know, basically this, you know, something like that. Uh, but anyways, watch this corner route. You'll see this outside third. And if he doesn't match him, you can throw the corner. But that's kind of the idea. So, you know, really in this game, it's not as big of a problem. But in years past, this has been a consistent problem from cover three. So the way that you combat this 
um, is again understanding your user responsibility so if I'm sitting over here and I've got an inside quarter on that left side and I see that post coming over the middle let me just show you what my user would do so if I'm in here motion him over and I just want you to watch my user so I'm sitting in this area right here I see a post so I go up to the post and there you see it get over the top a little bit better but that's the idea once I see that post I'm gonna go take that post and force them to have to check it down underneath. One little way that you can really get away with this though um, is by simply running, if you're running this cover three, uh, one little way that you can get away with it, especially if they put like a little underneath route as a check down, um, is to simply just, again, you play your cover two or your cover three, you got it looking like this kind of, right? Um, all you have to do is just drop a, uh, either a three receiver hook zone or a vertical hook zone something like this right here real simple um, you know just drop him in that zone now you've got freedom to be able to run up the seam and then they're gonna basically be able to rally down and tackle off that route so that is kind of the biggest thing um, you know we talked a little bit about cover three Mabel what we we covered that extensively in our encyclopedia guide uh, which you can get in the description but these are kind of the core tenants the core principles that are used in a cover three defense. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And there's a lot that you can do off of this, but this is kind of the core tenets of cover three and how it works. So now that you know this, my hope is that you'll be able to really understand not only how to run cover three on your own, but also how to create some really good cover three bombs that are really effective. Because again, the core problem, the core problem is the wide side of field quarter or uh, third can get glitched out. So what you do is you put the inside quarter there. But where that leaves vulnerability is it leaves a lot of vulnerability on backside uh, seams and stuff like that. So you just have to be ready for that. But if you're ready for that um, as a user, and that's why I like to drop that yellow zone there, then you'll see here you're not going to get bombed over the top. Um, that time the inside quarter did something a little glitchy but that's the idea so thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it and if you want to get my defensive encyclopedia that we're going to continue to update for years to come that actually details exactly what these zones do you can get that down in the description for just 15 bucks